defense call Douglas to the stand? Please? The defense calls Douglas MacArthur to the stand. Please state your name and position in the United States military for the court. I'm General Douglas MacArthur. Okay, thank you. Can you please tell me a little bit about your experiences during the war? Where did you come from? Uh, throughout the war, I commanded troops, both U.S. and Filipino, in the Philippines and the Southern Pacific. Okay, thank you. Let's get through our agenda here. Can you please identify the man in this picture? Uh, sir, listen to me. I understand you're an American general, and you don't want to be here uh, defending a Japanese man. But you're my witness, and I asked you a question. I'd like an answer. Can you please identify the man in that photo? Okay. You don't want to go along. That's fine. Let's play a little bit of a matching game, shall we? Which man here is that man in that photo? This photo. Who's that? Sure, so what's that? It's a propaganda poster. Why is a propaganda poster featuring the emperor and not the prime minister? Because the Americans hate Hirohito. They don't even know who Tojo is. They know Hirohito is responsible for everything. That's right, he is. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship with Bonner Fellows? You scummy bastard. <laughs> Perhaps you still don't understand. I asked you a question and I expect a clear, concise answer. Please tell me about your relationship with Bonner Fellows. Fine, we're great friends, very close. We often rode each other throughout the war. I view him somewhat as my crochet, but how is any of this I'll relevant? I'll tell you how it's relevant. You're involved in Operation Black. Just, you're, you're just what? framing the Prime Minister right. because you know you need what? the Emperor alive. Just Sir! Were you involved with Operation Black? You don't have to answer that. I'll answer it! <laughs> were you involved? with Operation Black Ops. You want and I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! <laughs> Sir. Tell me about Operation Black Ops. You're damn right I was involved in it. The Americans hate Hirohito. We know he is responsible for everything that has occurred throughout this bloody war. The United States has defeated Japan, and we have now occupied it. Mr. Palmer, have you ever seen a man die? Sitting there in agony with his limbs blown off, screaming for his goddamn mother to come and save him, knowing that every man around him knows he's going to die? If we remove Hirohito from power, millions of more men will suffer experiences like this. If Hirohito is removed from this throne, millions of more men will die, and this bloody war will continue. We have interrogated Tojo and other cabinet members. They have agreed to our terms, and they have agreed to say what we want them to say, because we are the victors, and we get what we want. If I had it my way, every Japanese leader would be dead. But we can't do that. Hirohito has to remain on the throne if we want this occupation to be successful. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Prosecution, cross-examination, your time is to remain. Sure. All right. So, uh, Mr. MacArthur, right? Uh, you were very general. General. Sorry, General MacArthur. You were very emotional right now. So, you have a little bit of emotion in the actions of the war, right? You saw your troops die. Um, you were in the front lines of the war. Could you uh, tell me how much do you know about the Japanese hierarchy? What's your knowledge of Japanese hierarchy? Um, uh, objection. He has no knowledge of Japanese hierarchy. Okay. Okay. So he's involved in Operation Blacklist, therefore he should have some knowledge of the hierarchy. Of the so My examination with the general was to get the American perspective of the war, not his personal perspective. It's a okay. question. I want to raise my So, so looking, at, looking, at, looking at that, uh, basically American perspective. Uh, uh, why would you have American perspective if you don't have any knowledge of the hierarchy, and how would you know if you was involved or not? Because as a leader within the United States Army, I'm well aware of what goes on, and I report that to my commanders, so, so who are also so in the situation. Do you know exactly how you can have orders travel down? Orders go up, and information goes up. Okay. So you know, all right. Um, so you're saying essentially, you're, uh, in your inner editor, you said that you should kill every single Japanese leader. I said if that was my way. So that includes Sojo. Yes. That includes Sojo. I mean... Right. Why, why, why would you want to kill Tojo? Because every Japanese leader is guilty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, briefly, you see how Tojo was not involved at all with uh, the actual war. Right? Is that, is that what you said? Tojo was not involved at all? I'm not aware of what he had in his all right. information. So, let's, let's uh, look at your own quotation. Well, not your own. Um, your confidant, rather, your personal position. Do you know him? Yes. All right. Could you read that out loud? He, this is what he said you stated yourself. This is before Operation Blacklist, which we're talking about, human being. Could you read that out loud? Good quote. Uh, Roger Edberg, 
said he wanted peace to bring democracy in Japan. Further, he thought the emperor was a captive of Tojo and the warlords, that they were really responsible of, for the war, that Hirohito would be instrumental in permanently changing the structure of government in Japan. So, before Japan was in place, it was your opinion that uh, Tojo was the main individual involved in the war. He was the one who hijacked uh, Hirohito. What changed after Operation Blacklist? Why did you change your opinion? Why are you coming up here right now and saying that Tojo was not the one involved? It's Hirohito. Because when I st stated this statement, it was before I had extreme, or better knowledge of the government but didn't of Japan. You say, did you say the general you had knowledge before? What changed in, in that knowledge? It's called Operation Blacklist. What happened during, Operation Blacklist? after this. What happened in there? We found, what information did you gain? Did you gain anything? Could you tell me that? We obtained better information of how orders okay, stand well, throughout it? the government. What was it? That Hirohito had well well informed information of what was going on. So at the was point, really the point where Tojo himself stated that Hirohito was not responsible. How is that better information? Ten seconds. I mean, can you please restate the question, please? That's that's time. So prosecution arrest. Okay. Defense call your mileage to the stand. The defense calls the defendant Hideki Tojo to the stand. Sir, if you could please state your name and position for the court. I'm General Hideki Tojo. You don't, you don't sound all right. Are you, are you feeling okay? I, I was given new dentures by the Americans. Oh, you must not fit well. No. Okay. Uh, well, what positions did you hold during the war? Tell us about your experiences. In 1933, I became a general in the Kwantung Army in Manchuria. There, um, from there, I rose up the ranks until 1941 uh, when I became prime minister. Thank you. Can you please explain to the court Japan's situation that they faced in 1941? Um, 1940, rather, I'm sorry. We, we, rec we recognized the Ishii French government, and they allowed us to be the stationed troops in French Indochina. For that um, action, the Americans placed a total embargo on Japan. Okay. A total embargo? What did Japan decide to do about this? Well, we... Uh, from all that all of that summer until uh, uh, summer of 1941, up until October, we uh, attempted to solve the situation diplomatically, but the Americans would not back down at any single point. So, what was the final result? On um, October 15th, the deadline passed, and uh, war was officially adopted by the um, by the cabinet. Later. Okay. So, what happened next? Um, I became prime minister after the um, previous prime minister stepped down because he did not. Um, he was refusing to cooperate. So correct me if I'm wrong. You essentially came into power after you had tried, after Japan had tried diplomatic means to end the embargo, and war had already been decided upon. Yeah. Yes. Okay. When was this course of war officially approved? November fifth, nineteen forty-one. Nineteen forty-one. So how did you spend this first month in the prime minister position? Um, well, now that war had already been decided upon, I spent it. Um, basically trying to coordinate between the Army and Navy and uh, getting uh, all the plans ready. Mm -hmm. Where were you, we're going to shift gears a little bit, where were you during the American defeat in the Philippines? <laughs> Tokyo. Tokyo. You, were, you weren't there? I was in Tokyo. You didn't see it? No. You, didn't, you weren't there at the time? No, I was busy. You weren't talking to the general there? No. Oh, okay. So you were a thousand miles away, okay. Uh, and how much control did you have over that specific battle? None, really. Um, the, uh, the, prime, uh, the Minister of War, uh, Sukidama, had, had uh, been pressed by Hirohito to impress the generals there to attack multiple times. I was, I was busy elsewhere. Um, they, they, were, they attacked before they were ready because we needed that sector of the front to be um, cleared up because we, they were tying too many troops down there. Mm -hmm. So what were you doing from then on? Well, I was busy working on all of the, the, the strategic plans. You have to remember, at that time, the Japanese were fighting in Guam. We were fighting in, uh, in Wake Island, the Solomons, New Guinea, uh, the Java, China. China was huge. Uh, we were fighting all over the theater. And the, the problem is with the Japanese military, I mean, I, I can't uh, focus on one single battle that's, that's already in a backwater, something I can't be focusing on because it's, it's going to happen at some point. We're going to win. We just need those troops out of there. And so I'm trying to focus on, on the, the peripheries and trying to ensure that Japan is going to be safe. And I mean, The large scale. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, and the, the Japanese military is just so hard to deal with. Admiral Miyamoto pulled the chair out from under of an army general during during a staff meeting. During one of my staff meetings. If you think that MacArthur is a prima donna, you should, you should see that. Are you feeling okay, sir? I had a bullet in my skull. 
Goodness. Well, I we'll see how you feel. I have no further questions. Prosecution, prosecution, sure. You have our uh, five minutes. So, uh, I'm not avoiding something. I attempted to shoot myself. You didn't shoot yourself. Well, why did you do that? Code Bushido. Code Bushido. All right. Are, are you well right now? Or? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that right now? Sure. Full, full, fully? Fully, no. Rational, no? Okay. Right. Rational, yes. Rational? Okay, cool. Let, let's make sure. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about this, uh, uh, your decision. You're saying you weren't in control of the actual army. So, before you were made prime minister in, in, in November, was it? Um, late October. Late October. You made prime, uh, prime minister in late October. Yeah. What were your positions for that? Before that, I uh, had held many positions, including uh, head of the military police mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Quantum. No, specifically before that, were you not the war minister? That's I was, yes, I was the war minister. You were the war minister. And were you not involved, like, primarily involved in the dealings of the actual invasion of, uh, of the United States for Harvard? I were you not in staff meetings? I, I was during, present during staff meetings. You were present, and you were personally involved in the actual decision itself, even before the prime minister. I was personally involved in this decision. However, sure. the decision had been made before I had. So, so in, so in essence, it was made. We just formalized. So, it. your reasoning for the uh, invasion in this case was that the U.S. was putting up an economic blockade. Is that correct? Correct. A total correct. economic blockade. Of Japan. So. Uh, <coughs> So in November uh, 1941, when the U.S. proposed this treaty to make French Indochina a completely, completely neutral zone where you could have free access trade, which would have taken care of all your problems, why did you reject that treaty in November? Wait, which one? Uh, you can look at the wall. Here. Basically, rejected this treaty in 1941, November 1941, where the whole, the whole essential point was a neutral French Indochina where you would have been able to have all the Japanese trade you were asking for, which you so-called, so like, blame this defensive war on. Well, we just, I think the problem was that we were, we needed more trade than just through a single port. <coughs> we can't be... We can't, was it, it was the whole, the whole region was completely neutral? That, that French Indochina is not exactly a large region. We have to remember that there's also um, the whole Pacific, which is thousands of miles large. French Indochina is just um, Vietnam, Siam, uh, Thailand. That's, that's a very small area. Sure. So, uh, let's move on. Now, you talked about how uh, you're saying you weren't involved in the actual decision process, is that correct? I was involved in the decision process. You were involved in the decision process. I did, not, I did not drive the decision process, nor did I. Who, who drove the uh, decision process? Sugigama. Sugigama. Okay. Uh, so, you're, you're, uh, you're defending you're saying that Kira Hill was responsible. And you're saying Sugigama, so please pick one. Sugigama. But basically, what, what happened was, we decided upon war, but we still had diplomats in Washington up until December 7th trying to find a way of peaceful means out. And that um, Yamamoto's, or Nagumo's force in route to Pearl Harbor had orders to turn around at a moment's notice in case these diplomatic um, the diplomacy would work. Okay. Well, let's look at the whole uh, prisoner war situation. Now you were saying that you weren't involved personally, right? I, I had too much else. I, I dealt so with it. Okay. Um, did you get any misses from the Red Cross, for example? T uh, appealing to you specifically, talking about how there's uh, human rights violations. Is there any such thing happening? I believe I did, and I in, I, I took them and gave them to my subordinates. So, uh, looking at reference to the previous testimony of Suzuki, one minute. Uh, giving to your, your uh, other people involved, sort of just ripping in front of everyone that piece of paper? I, is, I received Is that how you go forward and give? Like delegate tasks to other people by ripping the piece of paper and saying humanity has no place in the cabinet. I had received so many that day that I had I had given them to. No, I was the only one received that day. Or sorry, I received many in that that section section that 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 um that cab that, that overall cabinet meeting, not that specific day, mm -hmm. but over the um time of the cabinet meeting, and I had been giving them out to my men. Here's another quote that you said in 1945. Uh, should we read that out loud? The moment the first American soldier steps foot on the Japanese mainland, all prisoners of war will be shot as okay. a precautionary measure. Uh, okay. Now, uh, in 19, uh, you uh, admitted that Japan signed the Geneva Convention, the second, the Geneva Convention. Yes. Does this all uh, hold with that at all? In, in the fact that uh, yes or no it's Does simulated it by simulating circumstances, no, by letter, yes. Okay. But by letter, you were supposed to follow it? Yes. Is that, okay. Prosecuting arrests. Oh, God. Well, the prosecution presents final argument. Sure. 
First of all, let's look at the bats. Now, uh, the defense will come up here and say, and give a very big emotional appeal to you. They're going to be mad, they're going to be emotional, they're going to be very persuasive. However, what I urge you here is look at the facts. See what actually happened overall. Now, essentially, what the defense boils down to is the fact that, oh, Toji was playing this game, was I involved? They're, they're proposing that Toji was locked in some room, had no involvement with the Japanese government. That's simply not true. What we see was Toji actually being involved. Toji was part of every single decision process because of both the war minister and the prime minister. Now, there's two main counts that you have to look towards of uh, prosecuting the Tojo for war crimes. First of all, is waging aggressive war. Now, the whole Japanese rationale for uh, a defensive war was based on the fact that they had a uh, uh, lack of trade and they wanted to pursue that. However, Tojo himself was the reason of why the economic treaty that the U.S. gave was rejected in November 1941. They had the option of negotiating with the U.S. They had the option of a full, full trade agreement where there would be no war at all. But they rejected that just because they had notions of, uh, of grandeur and they wanted to have a war in the first place. There was no self-defense in this situation. When they gave away the option, they rejected it. So when you reference the fact that they signed both the uh, called beyond pact and the, uh, where they were not supposed to wage war. You see a clear violation on that part from Tojo and his whole cabinet. Now, we're not, we're not saying here that Tojo was the only one responsible. However, Tojo was involved in the decision process. And he is here right now on trial and for his part. And what we see here is clearly involved. Now, uh, looking beyond that is probably the biggest point here on um, crimes against humanity. Now, Tojo keeps on saying here, oh, I was all the way up in, in uh, far away. However, as a prime minister and a war minister, he was intimately involved with the decision process. He knew what was happening in both Cap O'Donnell and the Baton Dead March. He went in 1943 and personally inquired into the situation, but he didn't do anything. When the Red Cross sent him a missive appealing to actually go forth and uh, take care of the situation, he ripped in front of his cabinet and said that he scoffed the whole notion of humanity. There is no justification for that. When at the point where Japan signed the Hague Conventions of 1899, 1907, the, the, the Nine Powers Treaty, and the Geneva Convention of 1929, when all this occurs, you can clearly see Tojo was at fault. So the defense will come up here and give you a very persuasive appeal. Right, look at the facts. And the facts show you was Tojo was involved. He knew what was happening, and yet he still committed those actions. And based on that, you have to convict him as guilty. Now, this is a new step towards a more perfect world where these acts, these massive acts against humanity can't be committed. And in order to ensure that it happens, we have to establish it right now. If someone does this, we will in fact put them to justice. If we let told you right now, what we're doing is we're essentially giving a free check to anyone in the future who wants to commit these acts by saying, oh, I was I involved. However, in order for justice to be dispensed, we have to do this right now. And as such, you have to uh, uh, make sure that Toja is guilty. Uh, and at that point, uh, you will simply be making a brighter future. So the prosecution does. Well, the defense presented it. Um. On September 8, 1945, Kideki Tojo sat in his house, while at the same time, reporters and officers stormed his surroundings. He knew this was the end. He knew he'd be blamed. So he took out a pistol, pointed it at his chest, and fired. Within seconds, dozens of American doctors, reporters, and officers rushed in to find him writhing on the ground. They grabbed and brought him to the nearest hospital where they saved his life. The man wanted to die, but they wouldn't let him. And now that man sits in this very courtroom, having recovered to full health, and this man tried to kill him all over again. Why couldn't you just let him die that night in September? Why does he have to suffer? Because they needed this trial. They needed Tojo to be found guilty. They needed someone to be found guilty. But if Tojo wasn't around to take the blame, then they'd have to turn to the emperor. But, well, they needed the emperor alive. If this man really cared about justice, then through his eyes, your job could have been done <coughs> over a year ago. I don't bring this up as a distraction or for emotional appeal. The defense merely needs to reinforce the validity of some of the evidence that we've used over the course of the trial. You see, after the Americans saved Tojo's life, they took him into captivity and began to interrogate him. 
The interrogation proceedings took place over four months this past winter, and you can be damn sure that the interrogators touched on every topic in great detail, and they weren't going to let him get away with any sneaky lies. He was under the control of the American prosecution team the entire time. His word should be regarded as fact. Your Honor, everything, every piece of evidence that I've prevented, uh, presented in relation to that interrogation should be regarded as a first-hand eyewitness account. Now that we've settled that, let's talk facts. The court has seen a lot uh, over this trial. It's seen compelling arguments from both sides. But on the main two areas of waging an aggressive, unprovoked war and committing tri crimes against humanity, the defendant should be found not guilty. So let's look at these two areas. First and foremost, it is ridiculous to assume that the kellogg briand Pact is inviolable. OK, sure. It might not clearly have a clause that states that it disappears in cases of self-defense, but something so rudimentary, a principle so <coughs> fundamental, so basic, has to be implicitly understood. Otherwise, anyone can do anything and get away with it. And technically, the Americans would also have violated their treaty in their retaliation against Japan after Pearl Harbor because they're not allowed to use war to settle their differences with a country that just attacked them. It doesn't work. It's wrong. Japan felt attacked. The West was deliberately destroying the Japanese economy while at the same time pouring millions of dollars into their own military systems. This is an economic war. Hideki Tojo stated in his interrogation, which I've just made valid, that when he ordered the attacks that took place on December 7, 1941, he did so out of self-defense. You cannot convict this man of waging an aggressive, unprovoked war. Then we get to war crimes. Anything that took place in China before 1941 is largely irrelevant to this trial. At that time, Hideki Tojo was a soldier. He was a general. He was one of dozens stationed out in the middle of China. During his time there, he did not personally commit any war crime, nor did he order any man or group of men to do so. When he became prime minister, Japan saw atrocities both in the Philippines and in China. However, the defense has repeatedly shown that the information that the prime minister received was very misleading, uninformative. It was incredible. It was incomplete. He didn't know what was going on. He never saw the atrocities. He never went there. He was never invited there until after it happened. You can't convict a man of a crime of which he has no knowledge. Additionally, the defense has shown many times that the military, uh, rather, the prime minister cannot control every aspect of Japan, every aspect of the government, every aspect of the military. I proved on the first day that the military has the opportunity to override the civil government. And we've shown countlessly that soldiers sometimes disobey generals who disobey higher command. He can't control an individual soldier out in China and what he does to a Chinese woman. He wasn't there at Bataan calling the orders, telling the Japanese men to cut off the heads of American soldiers. You can't take anything that has some relation to Japan and immediately trace it right back to Hideki Chojo just because he's the head of the government. It doesn't work and the syllogism is wrong. Gentlemen, we've just finished fighting in a long, bloody, horrendous war. But the fact of the matter is, I fear we're many, many years from a real, lasting peace. We cannot afford to start this long, peacemaking process with the conviction and slaughter Ten seconds. of a wrongfully accused, innocent leader. Hideki Tojo is not guilty. Now, real quick, we want to let the audience be the jury and come up with the verdict. I was going to have a thing to fill out with the copy of didn't work on right now. So we're just going to do it by a show of hands. So you're going to raise your hand when I ask for each verdict, and then uh, we'll see which side wins. Uh, can the counsel and defendant please rise? Slightly on the right. Okay. By a show of hands, who thinks Hideki Tojo is, given by what you've seen here today, who thinks he's guilty? Eighteen. And who thinks he's innocent by what you saw here today? Oh, just got it. Mm. 24 innocent, 18 wow. guilty. All right. Thank you very much for coming.